Today, I randomized the overall of every player in the NBA, and immediately when you check out the Sixers roster, you can see a huge difference. Kelly Oubre Jr. is now the best player in Philadelphia, and Joel Embiid is one of the worst. He is a 50 overall. Moving over to the Milwaukee Bucks, Jay Crowder is their new best player. Patrick Beverly is a 99 overall. And all the way at the bottom of the roster, you see some of the guys in their starting lineup, like Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez. They got absolutely cooked. Over in Chicago, Alex Caruso is the new best player at a 91 overall. The Cleveland Cavaliers saw Darius Garland and Isaac Okoro go up to 90. Also, Amani Bates is an 84. The Celtics have quite a few really good players. Jaden Springer at a 99. Peyton Pritchard is a 94. Luke Cornett is a 90. And Nemius Keita is an 87. Also, I do want to note for some of these teams, I moved around the positions to make sure that they'd have their best players all in the starting lineup. So if some of the positions look weird as we move through the rosters, that's why. Anyways, checking out the Clippers, Bones Highland is the new best player for this squad, and they've got a good team. 492 pluses. For the Grizz, John Morant goes up one to a 94. Luke Cornett goes up a lot to a 96. And Derrick Rose is an 83. The Hawks saw Sadiq Bey go up to a 98. Seth Lundy is up to a 92 as well. Over in Miami, you've got a duo of 98s. Tyler Hero and Orlando Robinson. Plus, you've got Jamal Kane, Alondis Williams, and Caleb Martin. This squad is nice. Seth Curry is going to be the new best Curry brother. You all will see later but Steph got absolutely cooked by the random number generator over in Utah they've got a squad 490 plus overalls and a couple guys in the 80s the Sacramento Kings are just okay Kessler Edwards is their new best player at a 90 overall over in New York Daquan Jeffries is a 92 and man the Lakers are about to be ridiculous Anthony Davis up to a 98. Jalen Hood Shafino is a 96. Jackson Hayes is a 94. This team will be ridiculous in the simulation. The Magic are pretty decent with their duo of Paolo and Joe Ingles. The math suck. Dennis Schroeder is the new best player in Brooklyn at a 95. And overall, this is a pretty well-rounded Brooklyn team. Jamal Murray is the best player in Denver at a 94. Rest of the squad isn't too, too crazy though. Indiana is probably one of the the best teams in this video with five players above 91 overall and also a couple players in the 80s they're going to be tough to stop the pelicans got a nice one-two punch of trey murphy and larry nance the pistons are going to win a lot more basketball games in this simulation than they've won in real life this season the squad is insane james wiseman realized his potential and he's up to a 97 Asar Thompson is a 96, and I don't know how to pronounce this dude's name, but he's a 99. Over in Toronto, RJ Barrett is a 94, Oche Abaji is a 93, and Jordan Wara is an 89. A nice little big three, plus you've got Kobe Simmons at an 88. The Rockets are also pretty crazy with a duo of 99 overalls, Nate Williams and Steven Adams. You've also got Jalen Green and Amen Thompson. Wembenyama got super lucky in the random number two generator he is a 99 overall Jeremy Sohan is a 90 the team around him isn't great but 99 overall Wembenyama might just be enough to at least carry the Spurs to the playoffs the Suns look nice Devin Booker and Kevin Durant didn't get cooked KD is still a 92 Book is up to a 97 and Josh Akogi is a 95 You've also got Eric Gordon at a 90. The Thunder's new best player is Kenrich Williams. It's not looking too good for them. The Timberwolves have 490 pluses, Ant-Man, Cat, Monte Morris, and Jordan McLaughlin. The Blazers are low-key nice too, led by 99 overall Moses Brown. The Golden State Warriors are probably cooked. Steph Curry is a 67. And the Wizards, they're not great either. Also, before we get into the simulation, I want to note that I updated the tendencies of every single player who is at least a 90 overall so all the guys who are high overalls in this video will be shooting the ball a lot because for example a player like Omer Yurtsevin wouldn't typically have a high shot tendency in 2k but I made sure to update that so that he can play like a star in this video also real quick if you're enjoying the video so far I'd really appreciate if you consider subscribing we're trying to hit 40k thank you guys so much for all your support and now we can get to the end of the season season is wrapped and Rayon Rupert 
wins the MVP award, averaging a near triple double with over 30 points per night. He's a 97 overall, and he also wins rookie of the year. Kenny Lofton Jr. ends up winning six man of the year, putting up solid numbers, about 18 and nine. And Wembenyama was named the DPOI. Surprised he didn't win MVP considering he was a 99. And Matisse Thibel won most improved, averaging 27, eight and six on the season. Also two and a half steals and one and a half blocks. And Isaac Okoro was clutch player of the year with 36 and three on the season. And Chauncey Billups, coach of the Blazers, was named coach of the year as they won 68 games. Checking out the all NBA teams, you've got a lot of players you wouldn't typically see on all NBA. Rayon Rupert, the MVP is here. You've also got Tyler Hero, who averaged over 37 a night on the season. Jalen Hood Shavino was putting up nearly 32 a night, adding on 13 boards and seven assists. Dennis the Menace was out there getting buckets at a high level. So was Bones Highland. On your second team, you've got Sadiq Bey, who averaged over 34. Josh Akogi, Victor Wembenyama, Jaden Springer, and Kelly Oubre Jr. And then on the third team, it's Orlando Robinson, Steven Adams, Matisse Thibel, the Bald Eagle, and Paolo Boncaro. And then here goes your all-defensive teams as well. Now checking out the standings in the Eastern Conference, the number one team was the Pacers. Not a huge surprise. The starting five looks like an all-star team. The bench is also pretty solid. At two, you had the Miami Heat, Tyler Hero, Caleb Martin, Haywood Highsmith, Orlando Robinson, a great team. At three, it was the Detroit Pistons, another really solid squad. I don't know why they didn't play their 99 overall though. I swear these G League guys just don't get minutes for some reason. Don't worry though, headed into season number two of the video, that will change. Because all these G League guys are on one year contracts, meaning that they'll become free agents. And once they get new contracts, they'll actually start playing i don't know what it is it's just a weird glitch in the game shout out to 2k for that one anyway at four in the east you had the raptors another really well-rounded squad out west your number one team was the blazers 99 overall moses brown the mvp rayon rupert and matisse thibel running small forward you've got deandre ayton on the bench come on that's a great squad at two it was the minnesota timberwolves you got monte morris jordan mclaughlin josh minote tj warren is back You've got Cat and Anthony Edwards is coming off the bench for the T-Wolves. At three, it is the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, another great team. And at four, you had the Memphis Grizzlies. Now we can jump into the NBA playoffs. I'm just gonna move past round one pretty quickly. We did have one game seven, but it was a complete blowout. The Raptors won by 18, despite Kelly Oubre Jr. dropping 56. Oh my goodness. Anyway, now we can focus in more on our playoff matchups. We've got Indiana taking on the Toronto Raptors here. It's gonna be tough for anybody to beat this Pacers team all 90 pluses in the starting five out west we've got the Portland Trailblazers taking on the Memphis Grizzly the Blazers have the league MVP in Rayon Rupert our other Western Conference matchup is between Minnesota and Phoenix I feel like this one could go either way two great teams going at it and then heading back to the east our final matchup is between the Heat and the Pistons I'm not trying to pick a favorite team or anything but a Pistons championship would be kind of fire especially considering considering just how terrible they've been this season in real life. And after round two, it looks like the Pistons championship hopes are still alive. They beat the Miami Heat in six, advancing to face a really tough Pacers squad. And then out west, we've got Portland taking on Minnesota. The Timberwolves absolutely cook the Blazers in a sweep, and it looks like the Pistons are about to lose here as well. So we've got Indiana and Minnesota going at it in the NBA Finals. These teams are pretty evenly matched. I'm not sure who's going to win this one. It should be a close series. Game one will go to Indiana. T-Wolves take game two. Pacers will win game game three and the Timberwolves win game four so now we're all tied up headed into game five let's jump in the simcast in game five it's going to be the Minnesota Timberwolves barely getting out of there the Pacers tried to mount a last second comeback but instead the T-Wolves will get the dub and now Minnesota is one win away from a championship it looks like the Pacers do not want to let the T-Wolves get this win and in game six with the Timberwolves one win away from a championship we've got a close one we're all tied up at 130 a piece with a minute 51 to go here we gotta jump in pacers have possession of the ball on their home floor 
Ball's gonna go to Tyrese Halliburton. Halley going to the basket, swings it to McConnell. Halliburton gets it right back. Now Tyrese walks it to the foul line, finds Walker for a wide open dunk. Bad defense from the Minnesota Timberwolves there. Monte Morris setting it up for Minnesota here. They're down by two. Morris is gonna get the screen from Towns and a bounce pass down to him. Now Morris is wide open in the mid range and he knocks it down. Halliburton completely forgot about Morris after that bounce pass and he got an easy mid range look to tie this game back up. Now Halliburton has it for Indiana. He gets the screen from Walker. Walker rolls, puts up the layup and misses. Good defense from Towns. He secures the rebound and now the Timberwolves go back to Morris. Monte Morris is defended by the much bigger Obi Toppin. He's gonna get the screen from Towns. Morris pulls a short jumper and misses. He was shooting over two defenders there. And now with the game all tied up, Halliburton has the ball in his hands for Indiana. He's going to pull a three and knock it down. A big shot from Tyrese. Indiana is sitting on a three-point lead. Minnesota in possession of the ball. Morris to the basket for the quick layup. A good answer for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And they're back within one. Still about 30 seconds to go here. Just play good defense. The Timberwolves have a timeout left, so they should have plenty of time to get a quality shot off if they get this stop. Tyrese Halliburton is smartly wasting some time, but now the shot clock is ticking down. He needs to make his move. Halley gets the screen from Walker. He's going to pull another three and knock it down. Tyrese Halliburton, a huge shot. He does not want to go home here. That makes things really tough on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Only about seven seconds to go, and it is a two-possession game. It's going to take a miracle. It goes into McLaughlin. He shoots one from the corner. That'll do it. The Indiana Pacers get the win behind some Halliburton heroics in the clutch. Monte Morris tried his best, but it wasn't enough. And now we are headed to a winner go home game seven. NBA title on the line here. Who's going to come out on top, Indiana or Minnesota? It looks like in game seven, we're going to have another nail biter. With about a minute and 20 seconds to go, the Minnesota Timberwolves are down by three and the Pacers have the ball. Ben Matherin has it now for Indiana. Matherin's going to get the screen from Walker. Matherin fakes. He's about to step out of bounds. What is he doing? That's got to be a three second violation. Matherin gets the layup to go though. And just like that, the Indiana Pacers are up by five. The T-Wolves need a bucket. Monte Morris has it. He's defended by TJ McConnell. Morris working his way to the basket. No, he walks back to the foul line. Morris is not getting anywhere right now. He swings it to McDaniels. McDaniels over to Warren. Back to Morris. Not much time on the shot clock. Morris pulls a three and misses. That might just do it here for the T-Wolves. Pacers with a fast break. And TJ McConnell gets the leg. Up. Yeah, GG's man. The Indiana Pacers are going to win the championship in year number one of this video. But trust me, things are going to get crazy after this first season because a lot of our players will be entering free agency, shaking up the entire league. In the meantime, though, Tyrese Halliburton does win finals MVP, averaging 27 and 11 to bring a championship to Indiana. 57 overall, LeBron James retired. And now we're headed into free agency. This is without a doubt the greatest free agency class of all time. As a matter of fact, it's so great it would break the league. So we got to turn off salary cap so that everyone will find a new destination. I simulated to the final day of free agency. Some guys haven't found teams yet, but they'll figure it out in a little bit. For now, I want to show you guys where some of our players ended up going. It looks like the Detroit Pistons absolutely loaded up on talent, signing 299 overalls. They also brought back Wiseman and brought in DJ Wilson. The Golden State Warriors, they didn't get very lucky in this video, but they ended up signing Monte Morris and Darius Baisley to make up for that lack of luck. Also, the Rockets, they pick up Nate Williams for their squad, and they pick up Javante Green, getting 295 pluses. As you can see, there were a lot of notable moves here. So what I'm going to do is simulate to the end of this season, and then we can check out what teams improved a lot as a result of these big offseason changes. Another season in the books, and apparently Rayon Rupert is just the greatest ever. He wins another MVP. Jalen Martin wins Rookie of the Year. This was one of those G League guys who didn't get to play in year one because 2K is being dumb. And and he ended up hooping winning Rookie of the Year. DJ Wilson was Sixth Man of the Year over in Detroit. And wow, he had a great year in Philadelphia. 
but then was put in a bench role for the Pistons and still did his thing to his credit. And Matisse Thibel wins Defensive Player of the Year. He's known as a defensive specialist in real life, but now he can of course do a lot more being a 99 overall. Josh Minot wins Most Improved Player and Sadiq Bey wins Clutch Player of the Year. Also, Monty Williams won Coach of the Year. The Pistons won 70 games. Yeah, I remember they stacked up on players in free agency. Checking out the first team, you got Rayon, Rupert, Monte Morris, Tyler Hero, whose scoring went down a lot. Victor Wembanyama and Alondis Williams. On the second team, you got Jerace Walker, Matisse Thibel, Paolo Boncaro, Jalen Martin, and Bones Highland. And then on the third team, it's Oubre, Sadiq Bey, Jaden Springer, Nate Williams, and Trey Murphy the third. And then here's your all defensive teams as well. Checking out the standings, the Pistons. They won 70 games, and it makes sense why. 499 overalls they've got a fifth player who's a 98 in dj wilson yeah this just isn't fair i don't know how any team in the league is gonna stop them at two it was the pacers the reigning champs still look great but i don't know if they have enough to get past that pistons team at three it's the miami heat wow another really good squad and then at four you've got the toronto raptors who brought back kyle lowry over in the western conference the rockets were the number one seed and all 90 plus starting five the Clippers had a crazy starting 5-2, and they were the two seed. The Blazers came in third. The two-time MVP, Rayon Rupert, and the Lakers were fourth. Yeah, this LA squad looks good as well. Now that we've checked out some of the top teams, let's jump into the playoffs. I'm hoping we have some more hopping games this year. We had a couple hopping games last year in the NBA Finals, but nothing too crazy. And in round number one, we're going to have a game seven between the Golden State Warriors and Portland Trailblazers. Is the two-time MVP? MVP about to go down to Golden State? I guess we're gonna find out here. Rayon Rupert was not about to lose like that. He dropped 28, 8, and 10 to beat the Golden State Warriors and move on to the second round. So now the Portland Trailblazers will be taking on the Los Angeles Clippers in round two. The Clippers definitely have a way better point guard than the Blazers, but otherwise these teams are somewhat evenly matched. Our other Western Conference matchup is between the Utah Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder had to find a way to get in the mix in this video. Even with the randomized overalls, you all know the Thunder have to be good somehow. And wow, the eight-seeded Thunder actually just beat the one-seeded Rockets, so that's pretty crazy. Anyway, headed over to the east, we've got the Detroit Pistons taking on the Toronto Raptors. Good luck, Toronto. And we've also got the defending champion Pacers taking on the Miami Heat. The Toronto Raptors got swept by Detroit, and the Clippers beat the Blazers in five. Utah will take care of the Thunder in six, but we do have one game seven. It's between Indiana and Miami. And the Miami Heat are going to take care of the Pacers despite Tyrese Halliburton dropping 44 and 13 and Ben Matherin dropping 37. The Heat just had too many options who could go out there and score and they get the dub. Now they'll be facing the stacked Detroit Pistons in the conference finals. And then over in the West, it's going to be the Los Angeles Clippers taking on the Utah Jazz. The Jazz will take care of the Clippers in six and the Pistons do the same to the Heat, setting up a Utah versus Detroit NBA Finals. Game one of the series goes to the Pistons. They also take game two and three. Jazz will win game four, but the Pistons win the series in five, led by Tosan. He wins finals MVP. A dominant year from the Detroit Pistons. These other teams are going to have to make some moves to try and beat this stacked Detroit team. We do have a ton of big free agents this summer, so this could completely change the entire league. Maybe we see another super team form to rival the Pistons. I'm going to simulate to the last day of free agency. Still quite a few big names on the board. And one team that was really active this summer was the Toronto Raptors signing Dennis Schroeder and Jamal Murray. Also the Clippers got Nemius Keita. And that was about it for players who have moved teams so far. We'll see where some of these other guys end up going. Jay Crowder made his way to Denver. Isaiah Wong is on the Thunder and this team's kind of coming together now. 
Dorian Finney-Smith adds to a solid Minnesota team. Skylar Mays joins the Kings and he fits in perfectly at point guard. Now they've got a really good starting five. The Hornets were pretty active this offseason, signing Kessler Edwards and Omer Yurtsevin. The Cavs ended up picking up Zubak. And those were just some of the notable free agency moves that I saw. Let's get to the end of the season and see how those impact the league. Season is wrapped and we've got a new MVP, Jalen hood Shafino. Ace Bailey wins Rookie of the Year. Larry Nance Jr. is named Sixth Man of the Year for the Bucks. Matisse Thibel, another DPOY. And Kelly Oubre Jr. wins Clutch Player of the Year. And it looks like the Pistons are the team to beat once again as Monty Williams is named Coach of the Year and the Pistons win 69 games. Checking out the All-NBA First team, you've got Jalen hood Shafino, Victor Wembenyama, Bones Highland, Avica Zubaz, and Jalen Martin. Shout out to Zoo, averaging over 34 points a game. Here's your All-NBA Second Team and Third Team, and then here's your All-Defensive Teams. Now let's check out the standings. Can anybody rival the Pistons? Well, in the East, the Indiana Pacers won 61 games, which isn't bad. They're probably the biggest threat to Detroit. Oh my goodness, yeah. They're definitely a threat to Detroit. This team is insane. The Pistons might just be a little bit better, but the Pacers, they're great. The Cavs come in third. With all due respect, they're not beating Detroit. And the Raptors are fourth. They're solid, but again, they're not getting past the Pistons. Over in the West, though, I could see the Rockets giving Detroit some comp. The Lakers probably couldn't though with all due respect the jazz look pretty nice and okc comes in fourth they look decent as well but the only teams that i saw that really even have a chance of beating detroit are the houston rockets and the indiana pacers let's jump into these playoffs round one this season we've got at least two game sevens one of them is between the cleveland cavaliers and the milwaukee bucks two really solid squads going at it here and it looks like the Cavs will come out on top as Zuba drops 60 and 14. Oh my goodness, he's the greatest ever. Zoo might be able to lead the Cavs all the way to the finals. Do you see the way he's playing right now? Forget 2018 LeBron. I think we're in the year 2026. Yeah, this is 2026 Zubak. 23 free throws is nasty work, but he shot 20 of 22 from the field. Hold on, we got to take a pause to check out the records. Oh, Matisse Thibel actually set a record for playoff points as well. He's fourth all time with 58, but nobody has broken MJ 63. Anyways, heading over to the Western Conference, we've got two game sevens coming up. The first one we're checking out is between Oklahoma City and the Los Angeles Clippers. And the Clippers manage a win. Jordan McLaughlin with 36 for OKC. It's not going to be enough because Bones, he dropped 53. These playoffs are insane, man. Next up, we've got a battle of Texas game seven. The Spurs taking on the Rockets. Obviously, the Rockets look a lot better on paper, but the Spurs do have 99 overall Wembenyama, so that's got to count for something. And ultimately, the Rockets will come out on top in the Battle of Texas, 30-11 and 11 from Steven Adams, and also a near 30-point triple-double from Nate Williams. Now, our second-round matchups are all set. We've got the Houston Rockets taking on the Los Angeles Clippers in the West, and our other Western Conference matchup is between the Lakers and the Blazers. Out East, it's going to be the Detroit Pistons taking on the Washington Wizards and the Indiana Pacers taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers. And we didn't get any game sevens in the second round, so we're just going to head straight to the conference finals where we got the Pistons taking on the Pacers. I believe that whatever team wins this series will win the championship. And then out west, it's going to be the Clippers taking on the Blazers. I mean, maybe one of these teams could have a chance against the Pacers or the Pistons, but I just feel like it's going to be tough. Indiana and Detroit are tied up at two apiece after four games. We got to jump in the Simcast for game five. And in game five, the Pistons come out on top 29 from DJ Wilson. Now the Pacers are facing elimination in game six. But the Pacers respond with a 25-point dub, 33 from Halley, 32 from Okoro, 30 from Ben Matherin. Now we've got a winner go home game seven with a finals trip on the line. Can the Pacers dethrone the super team Pistons? No, they can't. The Pistons come out with a huge win in game seven, a 30 point dub, 
32 from Asar Thompson in this one. And we have a Pistons Clippers NBA Finals. If you believe in miracles, you might believe that the Clippers can win this one. Game one of the series will go to Detroit. Pistons also take game two and three. They're going to sweep the Clippers. You know what? I want to simulate one more season to see if somebody can take down Detroit. Also, just as a quick note, nobody notable really moved teams in free agency as we head into year four, the final season of this video. Season is wrapped and Alondis Williams wins the MVP award this year for the Miami Heat. Larry Nance Jr. wins sixth man of the year. I think he won this last year for Milwaukee too. Matisse Thibel, another DPOY. And Bones Highland wins clutch player of the year. He averaged over 32 a game this season. Here are your all NBA teams. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly this time so that we can get to the playoffs. Oh my gosh, the Pistons won 71 games. It's just too easy for them, isn't it? At two, you got the Miami Heat. They won 63, and they've got a solid squad. Indiana also still looks really great, but man, it's going to be tough for a team to rival the Pistons. Low-key, the Bucks look really nice, though. Over in the West, Utah won 63 games. They've got two 99s on their squad, also two other 90 pluses, and they've got Cooper Flagg, who's usually really good in the sim. The Lakers came in second, Rockets were third, and the Oklahoma City Thunder were fourth. I'm just going to move straight past round one so that we can get right into round two. We've got the Pistons taking on the Raptors here. We'll see if Toronto can pull off a miracle. Utah is taking on Oklahoma City. The Lakers are facing the Rockets. And the Miami Heat are taking on the Indiana Pacers. Well, all those series got wrapped up quickly. In the Eastern Conference Finals, it's going to be the Heat taking on the Pistons. And in the West, it's going to be Utah taking on Houston. Oh my goodness, the Heat are up 3-2 on the Pistons after five games. Let's see if the Miami Heat can close this one out in Game 6 with a win. It looks like the Pistons will get the win in Game 6, setting up a winner-go-home Game 7 here. And it looks like in Game 7, the Miami Heat are going to take down the Pistons super team, led by the league MVP, Alondis Williams. Jamal Kane had 38 points in this one. And in the NBA Finals, it's going to be Utah versus Miami. If the Heat just beat the Pistons, do the Jazz even have a chance in this one? Game one of the series will go to Miami. They also take game two and three. Jazz win game four, but the Heat win the series in five. Alondis Williams is named finals MVP. That's it for the video. Have a great day. Be sure to like and subscribe.